Let's go over premature atrial contractions. So these are sometimes referred to as PACs, and they're early contractions that originate from a focal point in the atria rather than the SA node. And this causes the atria to contract early. So here on your screen, you can see an example of some PACs. At first, we have this sinus beat, and then we have this early premature beat. Notice that early P wave. And it looks different than the underlying P waves on this rhythm. So we have the sinus beat, PAC, then we have another sinus beat, a PAC, sinus beat, PAC, and then we have some sinus beats. And notice after these PACs, we have this pause. So these PACs are going to present as early P waves that are different looking than the other other uniform regular looking P waves that are on or underlying rhythm. And these PACs can be conducted or non-conducted PACs. So whenever we're talking about conducted PACs, we're saying that this early P wave is followed by a QRS complex. Whenever that happens, that tells us that that electrical signal reached and depolarized the ventricles. But sometimes it's a little bit not as common with non-conducted PACs you're not gonna have this QRS complex after that premature P wave. And that tells us that that electrical signal didn't reach the ventricles. It could be that that signal was blocked. So what are some characteristics of PACs that you want to be looking for? So first of all, you're gonna have an irregular rhythm due to those PACs. However, that underlying rhythm is usually going to be regular. There's gonna be early P waves that have different shapes and sizes compared to the underlying rhythms P waves, and the PAC may or may not have a QRS after it. The PR interval varies due to the PAC. The QRS complex will be normal less than 0.12 seconds and early with the PAC, and it may be missing again if the PAC is non-conducted. The QT interval can be normal, but it can vary, and the T wave varies due to the alteration in ventricular repolarization after the PAC. Now what causes PACs? Well, remember the word atrial. If we have atrial enlargement, like of the left atrium, it can lead to it, tobacco use, regular use of stimulants like caffeine, inflammation of the atrial tissue, abnormal electrolytes, particularly a low potassium and magnesium level, and lots of stress can lead to these premature atrial contractions. Now let's talk about the treatment of PACs. So PACs are typically asymptomatic. A lot of patients don't even know that they're having them, especially if they're not frequent. However, if a patient's having them a lot, they can report feeling palpitations and a fluttering sensation in their chest. So with PACs, they can also occur in patterns like bigeminy or trigeminy. And the rhythm I showed you earlier that was um, atrial bigeminy because we are having sinus beat, PAC, sinus beat, PAC. And if these PACs are becoming frequent for the patient, they're having abnormal patterns, further investigation may be required to see if the patient has an underlying heart problem. So close monitoring of their rhythm will need to be done and medications like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers can be used. In addition, you want to assess and educate the patient on modifiable factors to help prevent these PACs. And again, remember modifiable factors are things that the person can change, hence they can modify. So some things include like smoking cessation, limiting alcohol intake, staying hydrated, avoiding caffeine, managing their stress, having a healthy diet to help prevent those electrolyte disturbances like the low potassium and magnesium. Okay, so that wraps up this video on PACs. And don't forget to access the other videos in this ECG review.